In World War II, the US and the Soviet Union fought alongside each other, but only a few years later, they were going head to head in the Cold War. Why did this happen? Hey Wystorians, welcome back to the Why in History. I'm your host, Alexander. By the end of 1941, in the middle of the Second World War, the United States, Britain, and the Soviet Union had one common goal, beat Germany. It was fairly organized too. The Soviets took charge of the Eastern Front while the Americans and Brits concentrated their efforts on the West. By spring 1945, this had worked fantastically. The Soviets pushed the Germans out of Eastern Europe and captured Berlin, while Britain and the US liberated Western and Northern Europe. However, instead of giving control of the countries they had liberated back to the people like the Brits and Americans did, the Soviets propped up authoritarian communist governments in the places they liberated. After Germany surrendered on May 7th, the three allies met in Potsdam, Germany to create a plan for Europe. During the conference, Harry S. Truman, the new US president following Franklin D. Roosevelt's death, told the Soviet Union's general secretary, Joseph Stalin, that the US had created the atomic bomb. This was the first time the Americans told the Soviets of the bomb, but Stalin already knew. You see, the Soviets had been spying on the US throughout World War II, and their spies were so good that they managed to find out about the atomic bomb, which was so secret that not even Truman knew about it while he was vice president. Even though there were many disagreements, a few things were agreed. The US finally managed to get the Soviets involved against Japan, and most crucially, it was decided that Germany would be divided between the Allies into four occupation zones. If you want to learn more about why Germany was divided after World War II, I have another video explaining this. But now, back to the Cold War. The Soviets' involvement in Japan was pretty useless though, because a few days after the conference ended, the US dropped its new atomic bomb on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The US didn't really trust the Soviet Union anymore, so when they feared that the Soviets would take over all of Japanese-occupied Korea, they asked them to stop at the 38th parallel. Surprisingly, they did, and Korea would be split into two occupation zones. Once Japan surrendered on September 2nd, the Americans and the Soviets were even more divided, and soon, that division caused the UK's former Prime Minister Winston Churchill to famously declare that an Iron Curtain had descended upon the continent of Europe. On one side, there was the Western Bloc, which was led by the United States, and on the other, there was the Eastern Bloc, which was led by the Soviet Union. The ideological differences between capitalism and communism prevented these two blocs from finding common ground, so they started competing. This was put on full display right after World War II during the Greek and Chinese civil wars, where they supported opposite sides. In Greece, the communists lost, and as a result, Greece became a part of the Western Bloc, but in China, Mao Zedong's communists won, and China became a part of the Eastern Bloc. The Soviets also refused to get out of Iran, which had been occupied during World War II, and the Americans were not happy. Because of all that was happening, the Americans announced the Truman Doctrine in 1947. In it, the US outlined a clear goal that would guide the country for the next 40 years, stop the spread of communism through containment. With this policy in hand, the US offered countries that had experienced destruction during World War II money to rebuild themselves under the Marshall Plan, but Stalin, fearful of the US gaining influence over his puppet states, blocked the Eastern Bloc from receiving aid, resulting in the Western Bloc developing way faster than the East. Yugoslavia actually split from the Eastern Bloc during this period, allowing it to obtain the US aid. However, it stayed communist, which made for an interesting relationship between Yugoslavia and the West. In 1949, the US created the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, to defend against further Soviet action. At its founding, its members were Norway, Iceland, Denmark, the UK, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Italy, Portugal, Canada, and of course, the United States. The Cold War had officially begun. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.